we have witches and wizards who have constructed healing pools it wasn't done for people for it to be constructed that is clear witchcraft i don't know what's wrong with people is it because the man is holding bible that is clear witchcraft it is not god the entire 27 books of the new testament i didn't see when they use water to pray because jesus never started it and paul warned us he said no other foundation can anyone lay apart from the one that christ have laid he said out of your belly shall flow rivers of water not out of the church shall flow bottles of water that you go to church they give you bottles or you carry your own the essence of church is to teach us how to live in the presence of god that is the essence that is why to god church is a briefing ground it's a training ground where we learn how to live in the presence of god wherever we go where we learn how not to carry olive oil in our pocket like champs how not to carry a piece of cloth they come mantle like witches how not to carry stones and all the garbages that agents of satan you call pastors are giving to people the presence of God is not tangible, but it makes tangible effect. You can't carry it in a bottle. You can't carry it in a piece of cloth. God is not a demon that you carry in a bottle. The Bible says, where is my house that you can build for me? He said, I will dwell with him who have a contrite heart. He said, he would tremble at my word. Tell your neighbor, we are the house of God. Not a bottle of oil. God is not a demon that lives in a bottle. I was trying to study the root of praying with water in the body of Christ. That's why in Africa, I was trying to study when did it start. Because I, I couldn't see it in the book of Acts. I couldn't see it in the book of uh, Romans. In fact, the entire 27 books of the New Testament, if you remove the, the, the four which is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which are transitional books. So let's say the 23 books. I didn't see when they used water to pray. I didn't see, even when Moses used water in the Old Testament, it was just a similitude. So of cleansing, of the cleansing effect of the word of God. So that's how those waters were used for washing. You get my point? And so, so I didn't see. So I began to search. Because what stirred me to search was, I discovered the book of I think second Peter or first Peter that one of the characteristics of the prophets that God used in the past they were researchers they searched in the realm of the spirit they searched things both in God and in books around so I began to search when did praying with water began in the body of Christ because Jesus never started it and Paul warned us do not lay he said no other foundation can anyone lay Apart from the one that Christ have laid, out of our belly shall flow rivers of water. Not, not out of the church shall flow bottles of water. That's what, that's what Jesus said. He said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of water. Not out of the church shall flow bottles of water. That you go to church, they give you bottles, or you carry your own and go. After I was searching, when did it start? When did it start? So I stumbled into a story that happened in Nigeria in the 30s. There was real, real idolatry in the western part of Nigeria in those days. Everywhere anyway, but I'm just telling the story. So a lot of, God was seeking how to penetrate in, into that gross darkness and rescue people. So there was a disease that broke out. Skin disease. It was more than skin disease. People were dying. So, then there was a woman then who was like, she, what her, she brought a prophecy or something. And before you know it, rain fell. The rain that fell in that community touched the people's body and they were healed. The plague was killed by the rain. That was a supernatural act of God. Because God speaks to the deaf through signs and wonders. So the rain fell. Everybody was healed. Now the woman, a woman, a young woman, she was not even married then, now began a prayer movement. And now gathered the rain that remained. The, the one that fell, you know, they put their, they never knew the rain was going to heal. So they just put their buckets outside. So the rain entered their containers. So she carried her own 
and begin to pour on people and they get healed also. That was how the use of water started in the body of Christ. As you spread this water, you, you have to expect miracle alerts. Pour la nouvelle année, this pour water, financier. as you spray it, Toutefois que vous allez l'asperger. Young man spray it in Port Harcourt. Un jeune homme l'a fait à Port Harcourt. And the people that is spray upon the water, miracles started taking place. And people that were are, are far off. On commence à faire place. That in the place. venue, many miracles took place. Plusieurs miracles took place. So, this water is right. It's ready right now, and also you avant. can use it anytime, any hour for miracle alert, miracle temps. job. Miracle money, miracle baby, Pour miracle baby. husband, miracle wife, miracle uh, contracts, con miracle cars, miracle house and miracle lands. This is the water for Alors, you to si cross with Prophet Jeremiah, but you want to use it, expect your Jeremy. unexpected miracles. God sent rain, rain healed people. God did not say carry the water in container. And begin to pour people, pour out on people. Any time. The reason why I love miracles, but I also am also cautious about miracle service, is because whenever there's a miracle service, there will be two miracle workers. Depending on your revelation. So there will be a miracle worker called Jesus Christ, in the midst of His people working miracles. There will also be the lawless one, second the two, who also want to manifest all power. So if the church or the people have revelation, their revelation will put the lawless one away from the arena. If they don't have revelation, the lawless one will come. So look at what it does. As soon as the holy one, that is Jesus, finishes miracles, the lawless one will come to do his own. That was what happened in that community. God sent rain and healed them. He didn't say put water in container. Then the people now conceived the idea of putting water in container. That was where praying with water started. And sadly speaking, it has been modernized. Now, people travel to Nigeria to buy water worth 3,000, 10,000, 15,000. You see, that tells you God did it once. Satan now continued. Because you always want to duplicate what God has done. Are you understanding me? The rain that fell was to introduce the rain of righteousness in that place. Carry the thing home. I don't know how I mistakenly stumbled on one of these Nigerian movies. Where those two short boys, I don't want to call names, you know, I don't call names. Those two short boys. They stole and stole and stole. Then they now told them that they have to come and swear at the square on the shrine of the village. So within the week before the day of swearing, they were in fact, they now decided to visit the priest of the shrine. So they planned that when they get there, they will steal the shrine. <laughs> so that there will be no shrine to swear to. And that the only time they will be affected is when they swear. So if there is no shrine to swear to, nothing will affect them. So they arrived at the priest's house. I don't know how that movie just flashed my face on social media. I couldn't stop watching it. So, while this one of them was discussing with the priest, the other one said, I want to urinate. So the priest said, hey, you can go to the back. So he went behind and carried the shrine and went while his other guy kept the priest busy so after they spoke for a while the priest was so excited about the boys he said but why do they say you are thieves he said that's why we are waiting for friday so we can swear before the shrine <laughs> not knowing that the brother has carried shrine away <laughs> And you cannot construct shrine in one day. It has to be a consultation with the gods. So when he, after a while, he now said, okay, uh, priest, please let me be going. He said, where is your brother that went to be? He said, that one, that one is a worker about, he must have gone. He said, okay, uh, 
it's, in, it's nice talking with you. He said, no problem. We will meet at the square. We are ready to swear. So after they got up with the, <laughs> with the shrine, the priest discovered there is no shrine. He followed to the house. When they got home, their father asked them, what is this? It's the shrine we are supposed to swear to. So since we have not sworn, he cannot do us anything. So let's hide it. In a few minutes, the man was coming to look for the shrine. They looked for shrine. The father said, we don't have shrine here. Why are you looking for shrine? Can shrine protect itself? Shrine should be able to protect itself. Why are you protecting the shrine? Is it not the gods of our land? If they can't protect themselves, how can they protect us? So Friday came no swearing to the shrine. Because there is nothing there. I'm teaching good here. There's nothing there. Everything they used for shrine was created by God. There's nothing there. So it's here means there is nothing there in the Praying with water has become a common practice in some Christian circles. But is it grounded in biblical truth? Let's explore this question together. Water holds significant symbolic meaning in scripture representing cleansing and purification Ezekiel 36 to 25, Hebrews 10 22, the Holy Spirit's presence and power John 7 37 39, Acts 2 2 3, baptism and new life in Christ Romans 6 3 4, Galatians 3 27, However, praying with water as a specific practice is not explicitly mentioned in the Bible, but we do find instances where water is used in conjunction with prayer. Ezekiel's vision of the river flowing from the temple, bringing life and healing Ezekiel 47, 1 12. Jesus' encounter with the Samaritan woman at the well, offering living water John 4, 1 26. The apostles baptizing new believers, symbolizing cleansing and new life Acts 2 38, 8. 3638. While praying with water may not be a direct biblical command, it can be a meaningful expression of our faith. When understood through the lens of Scripture, if we choose to pray with water, let us remember its symbolic significance, pointing us to Christ's cleansing and the Spirit's power. Avoid confusing the symbol with the reality, recognizing that true transformation comes from God alone. Embrace it as a personal or corporate expression of our faith rather than a mandatory practice. In conclusion, praying with water can be a biblical practice when grounded in scriptural understanding and focused on the true source of our hope and transformation Jesus Christ. I hope this message provides clarity and insight into the practice of praying with water. God bless you.